Today's topic is one of those topics that usually makes life a little difficult for new learners of the Italian language, but we're going to fix it by the end of the lesson. We're talking about gender in the Italian language. If we haven't met yet, my name is Manu Venditti and I'm the founder of Italy Made Easy, where we help people like you become fluent in Italian. We are in the middle, well, the very beginning of a 30-day series on Italian for beginners. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, make sure that you watch them and then come back to this because we're going to really learn something important today, which, like I said, is gender in the Italian language. So the question that I usually get from people who hear that Italian has gender for the very first time, not many people haven't heard this before, but it's like, what, why, how? That is why it becomes difficult because we have an idea of gender that is unfortunately very linked to physical human sex gender. Grammatical gender has nothing to do with the gender of humans. It's just a, a way of categorizing words in a language. And Italian is lucky enough to only have two genders. Other languages have many more. There are European languages with three genders. There are Australian, African languages with five or more genders. So we should be happy that we only have two to deal with. but. Today, I'll explain how it all works. So what is noun gender in Italian or any other language, I suppose? Why does it even exist? Could we do without? I mean, English doesn't have it, so couldn't every language do without? Well, like I said, you'd be surprised that most languages actually have it. So <laughs> we, we have to get used to it. Now, the most common question that I get from students who have been exposed to the Italian language and do know that there is gender is how can I know what gender a word is? Can I just look at the object and know instinctively that that is masculine or feminine? Unfortunately, no, there isn't such a way, but I'm going to help you become kind of good at guessing. But before I get to the tricks of how you can become good at that, I want to cover the implications of the fact that Italian has gender for nouns. Also important that you pay attention to the idea that we're calling this noun gender because the gender of the noun, the thing that you're talking about, is essential to everything else in the sentence. So when we use a word that is masculine or feminine, a lot of things will reflect that gender. And so you got to know the gender of something, the main thing that you're talking about in your sentence, because the articles that refer to that thing must match the gender of that thing. Not just the, uh, the articles, the adjectives as well, the qualities, and the verbs as well in many cases. You know, there's a bit more nuanced, but so all of those things will depend on the thing, the noun that you're talking about. Now, in English, we don't do that pretty much ever, but I'm going to give you a parallel that might get you to understand a little bit what's happening. So you have the word beautiful, but then you also have the word handsome. And so usually we tend to use beautiful for females and handsome for males if we are describing their looks, their appearance. And so we tend to say a beautiful girl, a handsome man. So that idea happens everywhere in Italian. So now also, bad example because I was talking about humans, but in Italian, every word has gender, not just the humans. Here's another question that I get a lot. Does gender change depending on who's using the, the object? So if a male is using a knife, is the knife masculine because the person using it is masculine or a man? And if, the, if, if a woman is using the same knife, does it change? No, it doesn't. The beauty of gender for nouns is that it doesn't change. If an object, if a noun, if a word is masculine or feminine, it will always be that. The answer to this question is no, don't worry about that. So here's the main rough guideline of how to tell if a word is masculine or feminine. Now, if you want to go deeper into the topic of masculine and feminine, we have other videos on this channel that really go in detail about this topic. But the purpose of this lesson is just to get you moving and get all the information as quickly as possible in a way that you assimilate it. Uh, you know, a two minute video where I just tell you this slide and the next three slides won't help you much. So. I'm here to explain. So masculine words are words that usually end with an O vowel in the singular. So think of a bunch of words that you know that are Italian and 
ask yourself, do they end with O? If they end with O, they are masculine. Can you think of one? Top of your head? Cappuccino. Cappuccino. That's a masculine word. Yep. Prosciutto. Prosciutto. That's a masculine word. And here's another one that it's panino in Italian. Panino. It's a single sandwich. Panino. Libro. Libro. Telefono. Telefono. Telephone. Lavandino. Lavandino. That's a new word for sure. That's a sink. And all of these words, as you can see, they end with the O vowel, the O sound. That means that they are masculine. This is true 95, probably 98, 99% of the time. Let's say 98 to be safe. But yeah, most of the times you will know that when you're learning a word, if somebody says a word, if you see a word, if you read something and it ends with O and it's a noun, then you will know it's a masculine word. This is important because, like I said earlier, knowing the gender of the main word will determine how the other elements of the sentence will need to change. And you will learn all of those, obviously. Feminine words are words that end with A in most cases. So pasta, it's a feminine word. Coperta, feminine, that's a blanket. Acqua, water, feminine. Porta, door, that's feminine as well. So can you think of other words that you know in Italian that might be feminine? Pizza, pizza, totally feminine. How about Italia? Now you call it Italy, but you probably have seen the word Italia, my country. It's feminine. It's a feminine noun. Now, I wish that this was all and we could just move on. Okay, if the word ends with O, oh, it's masculine. If the word ends with A, ah, it's feminine. We're done. Well, no, because eh, if you have been exposed to a little bit of Italian, you know that not all words end with A or O. Some of them still in the singular. We're talking about singular words, even though we haven't really learned about singular and plural yet, but sing a single item of these things, there are words that end with E. For example, the word for dog, cane. Cane, it doesn't end with O. So how do you know if it's masculine or feminine? If it was cano, you would know it's masculine. If it was cana, you know if it's feminine, but it's cane. What is it? Well, we don't know yet. Carne, carne means meat. Again, it's not clear what gender it is. Portone, that's the main door of a building. You don't know. I mean, I know what it is because I grew up with these words and I have an instinct or knowledge about them. But you, as a, as a beginner learner of Italian, you cannot really easily guess what they are. And pane, the word for bread. So what are they? Cane, dog, is a masculine word. Carne, meat, is a feminine word. Portone is a masculine word. And pane is also a masculine word. But again, there's no way of knowing. And we have other videos and uh, especially in our program, we can really help you how to guess these things. Here's more words that you don't know, that you wouldn't be able to tell. Fiume, fiume, river, happens to be masculine. Informazione, information is feminine. Chiave is feminine. Canale, which means channel, is masculine. So again, this is the hardest part uh, for a non-Italian to know how these words work and what gender to use for them. So my best tip is going to be for you to learn the vocabulary of a word with the article. We're going to get to articles very soon, but when you're studying Italian, if you're picking up new words, just take the time to learn the gender already. And the best way to lock the gender in a word is to learn it with the article once we get there. So that's what I suggest you do. Some people like to color code flashcards, you know, putting little post-its around the house and, uh, and have masculine and feminine words hanging around the house. The main thing is that you shouldn't stress too much about getting the gender right. You will get it right most of the time. Like I said, most words will tell you if they're masculine or feminine based on the ending. The ones that you don't know, you're not going to out of the blue just say a word that you don't know. You probably are going to be exposed to a word before you assimilate it as a new word. And so you always have a chance to learn what the word is. And like I said earlier, just learn it with the article. And the article will always guarantee that you know what gender a word is. And of course, the more Italian you learn, you'll be able to pay attention to the surrounding words. Since a noun determines the gender of all the other elements, if the noun doesn't end in a or o, 
chances are that one of the words that refer to it do. So stick around for all the future lessons in this series because you learn all of it. So now let's guess the gender of these words. But you guess the gender. So we're looking at lavatrice. Lavatrice is a word that hopefully you don't know, but we don't know what gender it is because it doesn't end clearly in an O or an A, so we don't know what gender it could be. But look at the sentence and right now you don't know any Italian basically. So can you tell what gender lavatrice could be? Questa lavatrice è rotta, which means this washing machine is broken. Lavatrice is feminine. Why? Well, just because it is, because there's no reason why a word is masculine or feminine, it's just this. <laughs> uh, but look at questa, which means this, it's in the feminine form, questa. And then rotta, which is the word for broken, which is an adjective, which refers to what is broken the washing machine. And so both this and broken, questa and rotta, are talking about lavatrice and they're both showing feminine. That tells you that lavatrice, a word that you didn't know up until that moment, is feminine. So now from that point on you can refer back to lavatrice as a feminine word and you are sorted. Quello stivale nero è bello. Stivale, can't tell what gender it is, it means boot, as in the shoe. But tell me what gender it is. I know you know. It's masculine. Quello stivale nero è bello. That black boot, the single one, is beautiful. So we have quello, that one, it's in the masculine. Nero means black and it's in the masculine. Bello means beautiful and it's in the masculine. So stivale must be masculine because they're all referring to the boot. Quella nave è grandissima. Nave is a ship or a boat. Probably, probably ship. Uh, so that ship is huge. Feminine, right? So I hope you're finding this useful. If you want to dive deeper into all of the topics of this other language, we have the most comprehensive platform on earth to learn Italian with access to all of our courses. We have a ton of courses and a ton of resources. We have a search engine that will find the perfect video lesson that explains whatever you're looking to find it out. So anyway, I will see you tomorrow to keep learning. Ciao.